I'll cool him off and calm him down straight away. I know that that is Spock's view. We have talked to MacArthur this morning. But Spock is under some pressure because his own man out there is beginning to try to make a record on him. And I'd like to uh, have your uh, understanding of this. Uh, if there is a major new change in the situation, we can always take a look at it. But the present plan is to pull these fellows out of Paulus in the next 12 hours or so, get the rest of the paratroopers down to Kamina, and then get them on back to Belgium, and not to attempt a paratroop drop on, uh, on the, uh, the other outlying places. But I wanted you to know that our ambassador there has uh, strongly recommended that we uh, undertake additional drops. This is not the Belgian view at the present time. It is not our view here. But I thought I ought not to uh, give our ambassador categorical instructions on this without touching base with you. Well, I think we have to consider, I, I agree with you. I think that they ought to tell us if they're going to have a series of these things or anticipate it's conceivable. Because I think when we perform these two, that they will corral some more somewhere and we'll just have a, a situation that we never end. Uh, on the other hand, I assume if we get out of there, it's going to be a major operation getting back in. And uh, uh, the question is, uh, do you abandon people in Houston and uh, uh, after you've saved them in San Antonio and Dallas? And, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think we've got to value it, carefully evaluate it, because if we get out, we can't get back in, can we? Well, we can. That'd be uh, pretty difficult, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Uh, with no Americans and uh, just go in to, uh, to clean up these two places we could have cleaned up before we left, wouldn't it be a little more difficult to get back in once we've gone? Well, that is that is true. We could take uh, keep uh, taking a reading on any information we can get from other parts of the country, but the, one of the troubles is that the other places don't lend themselves to the same type of operation, at least as far as Americans are concerned. And That's right. Americans are left apparently out in the bush somewhere. We just don't know where they are. Um, the Belgians um, uh, are, the, are the ones who would have the primary interest in this, and Spock's uh, uh, their present judgment is to, to try this sort of thing on further. Now, um, do we have any possible, uh, uh, conceivable uh, alternative of what's going to happen when we get out of there? Are we just going to sit there and wait till we have to get back in? Well, now, the, um, the uh, government columns are moving into this northeastern area. It'll take uh, Van der Waal a few days to clean up the Sandleville area, and then he's moving on to the northeast. There's another column uh, on the ground that is supposed to move toward uh, Bonia. Uh, they were given their, they are being given the trucks that they were asking for today uh, by air, and uh, they presume will be ready to move. But um, are we moving those trucks? Uh, I'm not sure what transport was moving. I, uh, it's uh, done by the transport out there before, not those that put in with the Tremere troopers. Um, but it's Ameri But you think it's American transport? Uh, I can't be sure of that, Mr. President. Uh, I, I just, it might have been, uh, it could have been, uh, I'm trying to find out, but it uh, could have been one or two of those uh, C-130s that we had had out there earlier, mm -hmm. giving transportation to this Congolese government. Uh, but well, now, what do the military men say about this? Uh, they, uh, they agreed last night that this would be the last one. Well, you might check that, get their support. Uh, then I would, uh, I would be sure that the Belgians were on uh, town, so we don't lose the friends that we've had. Right. And I just give this one extra thought. I think we got to watch it a little bit because we're going to be investigated and we're going to be murdered. And I just have Bob McNamara call Russell and say that uh, his, this is his inclination. And we've made two of them now, and we had to do it because Americans involved, and we've got to have the flag follow the men but that these are not Americans and get him to tell him that he can't do it. And that I think that gives you a little extra support uh, all around the place. Just ask him for, uh, that's telling McNamara, tell him that's his judgment and uh, what does he feel about it? And he'll tell him that right off the bat, quick away. And then, then you've pretty well uh, touched all your bases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that supports you a little bit. And if you have to move back in, well, you can say here's a change situation. Get him. Uh, Jim Greenfield has been getting a wrap-up of American press reaction, and it, 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 the first look at it shows that almost unanimously in support. Well, I just hope that's right. Uh, what I read is what this country says and what that African country says and what uh, somebody else says, and uh, I just think you ought to be, uh, everybody we got ought to be background instead of Maxwell Taylor telling us about what we're going to do out there in Vietnam before we even meet. I think it'd be better if you and McNamara and Greenfield and the rest of them were telling all the press that uh, 
you saved uh, many lives of Americans by daring and, uh, and justified action and you great humanitarians and now we're moving out and we're showing that we seek to dominate no one. But that ought to be in the do-gooder's mind, the Times and the Post particularly, and uh, because if you don't, you're going to get these Africans and the Muslims are raising hell now and saying that uh, this is a colonialism and uh, you are not careful. Martin Luther King wants to be a international figure. Our FBI shows that he's getting ready to go international with the Negro thing. You'll be interested in the New York Times this morning on uh, the same edition, carried an editorial saying that the, the government should have uh, moved earlier and the, the uh, press should have kept their mouths shut about these operations. And then on, in that same edition of the paper on the front page, they carried a story telling in advance that we were going to drop in politics. They do that, and then they send a letter to me and saying that state and McNamara don't have enough meetings with them, and that Johnson uh, doesn't give them uh, several days' notice, and the White House correspondents are incompetent. We have to send over and get yours, uh, who are specialists. And I don't know. I just thought that uh, the Scotty Reston, who comes to my meetings, and uh, 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 Eddie Foliard, who's Bill Graham told me, the most experienced man they had, and his little onion, the rest of them, they come to my meetings. But anyway, they're, they're starting a big... Uh, uh, press campaign now, and you ought to have Greenfield make a number of conferences you've had and try to compare them with other secretaries. I need that information. They've called, sent me a ultimatum now, head of the editorial association and AP and UP and all the press to have their leaders come in and sit down and talk to me about uh, how secretive we are, and particularly why we wouldn't let them go into Guantanamo for a day or two and why we wouldn't let them go into Gulf of Tonkin for a day or two and why I don't give them a week's notice before I give some news that I didn't get but an hour before. And if I didn't give it to them an hour, why they'd raise hell because uh, I delayed it a day. And I really don't know how to please them, but I'm going to try to show them. And McNamara has seen the press more than Forrestal and anybody ahead of him. And you have seen them more and appeared on more programs and uh, given them more backgrounders. And, that your man sees them twice a day, and mine's seen them 463 times the first year, and I've seen them 60 times. And yeah. I just don't know how you can satisfy them, but we'll try to do it. But I think we ought to get work that up pretty good. And and I, if I were you, I'd try to sit down with the Times people uh, pretty often, but I'd particularly point this out to them. And we're in a goldfish bowl, and before our planes come in, they're all told to be ready. They arrive and get your guns ready, on your mark, set, go. And they're told how to fire on them, and that uh, well, the president of the government needs improving too, but you sure do think that the press ought to have a code of ethics. One of, one of uh, the problems that I've had with the, the top New York Times men like uh, Scotty Reston is that uh, they uh, insist upon scoops. That is, they insist upon something that nobody else has. In my general approach to the press has been, and I will never say to one newspaper man what I won't say to another one. That's what I do, and you're right. You're right, and that's what they do do. They're a bunch of damn blackmailers. Scotty Reston is worse than Pearson uh, in that field, and uh, what they've been, they've been in ruin. On the Cuban thing, the president, I heard him say to Mac Bundy to tell Scotty not to write this tonight, and I'll give him an exclusive tomorrow. Yeah. And they have been, uh, they've been bribed before, and they are just a bunch of whores they've been slept with, and you can't expect any uh, the, any virgin territory there. So first game Secretary of State, I used to see Scott arrest in about every two or three weeks uh, for a long time, but when I refused to give him scoops, he, he, he quit coming to see me. That's right. Well, I just think you just have to sit down there and say if you give one scoop, the rest of them just raise hell and they, they meet. Us. But the first thing you do, get your best statistician to try to prove that you're as good as your previous secretaries. Right. To prove that your press men are better than your previous secretaries. Right. Uh, to prove that uh, uh, when uh, you have a White House presidential announcement, that you get it to the president as soon as you can so he can immediately announce it instead of asking him to give notice and say it come back two days later yeah. on the Gulf of Tonkin or on uh, Guantanamo or something else. There's another side of that coin. They say, I call them because they're incompetent people who have to cover me. Well, now, I think that's a real reflection on them that they've got incompetent people covering the president. Yeah. Yeah. It's an indictment of them, not of me. Well, now, I've, uh, quite frankly, I've found that there's quite a difference between the press corps that covers you and the press corps that covers me in foreign policy matters. Those fellows that cover you just don't have the depth and background and the competence in the foreign 
And that's what they say, though. That's the point. And they say that that's why I ought to give them three days' notice before I discuss with them and make an announcement that we're shooting in the Gulf of Tonkin so that they can wake theirs up, import them, get them in, get them back from New York or their lecture tour to a Jewish bond drive, and they can cover me. They say I don't give them but two hours' notice. And therefore, Scotty is off speaking to the editorial association, and he can't be there. Yeah. And that the man they've got there is incompetent. Yeah. Well, I think they ought to, the first thing they ought to do is sign competent people to the president that can report what he says. Right. If they don't, they ought to take his, uh, his stenograph copy and, and uh, report on it, because that's available to them. But their chief criticism of me, they say I have more conferences than Kennedy, that uh, I am more accessible than any president's ever been. I'm more available. But I do not give them uh, two or three days' notice so they can get their people that are touring the country on world problems back in to haze me. Yeah. And I take the position, if uh, Reston's there and Foliard's there and uh, there are a hundred of them there, that if they can't depend on them, that then at least, by God, they ought to be able to read the transcript and it's printed to them and available to them in 15 minutes. So, but anyway, they, after Tonkin and Guantanamo, their letter appeared to me yesterday, signed with AP, UP, President of the Editorial Association, all over, and it's, it's a major problem. They're demanding to call on the president, and when they do, I'm gonna say yes, we'll justify, we'll, we'll modify our procedures to try to uh, 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 do what uh, we can to be helpful. I'm not gonna fight with them, but I do want to point out that in my first year in office, Dean Rusk has had 21 press conferences, and uh, uh, his first year in Kennedy's office, he only had 14, or whatever it is. Or the Dulles only had 18. Do you have more than Dulles or not? I'm not sure. I haven't checked the figures on that. Well, take Herder before you came in. I would imagine he'd be having many. Uh, just just get you a good comparison. Right. And McNamara will do the same, and then, uh, then you ought to conclude, uh, in sem submitting this memo to me, that you have insisted as Secretary of State that when we had a presidential announcement, they'd be made as promptly as possible. Right. That would not be put on a deep freeze for a day or two. Right. And that you had to assume that they had confidence in the people that uh, reported it. Yeah. You can't indict them as being incompetent and say, I'm going to fire on these ships in the Gulf of Tonkin, but I won't announce it to two days until Scotty gets back from Los Angeles Israel Drive. Right. Right. That makes them look ridiculous. Yeah. And then I think it's an indictment. I think what you say is correct. I think the people that, that cover you are more competent in the foreign policy field than the one cover me. But I think that's their fault, not ours. Right. And I think we ought to say, well, damn it, if you want to know what the president's thinking, you want to haze him, put some men over there capable of doing it. Yeah. Well, I, on that point, I will try to arrange um, the one I have background is to try to cut uh, a few more of the White House fellows into them. Uh, this could create some problems within, within the organization. They don't object to that. What they object to is that uh, I don't cut the State Department people into mine. I don't give them enough time to get over there. That's what they want. I see. They don't object to, uh, to that. They just uh, they say their people at the White House are not as competent as people of State and Defense. Well, they they, shouldn't be that way. They want Hanson Baldwin to handle the, the intricacies of uh, the paratroop drop. Right. And they want to... Uh, 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 Hig uh, what is Higginbotham, is it over to your place? What's this, John? Hightower. They want him to handle uh, 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 what I did uh, in connection with the paratroop drop, when I made the decision, and what kind of shirt I had on, and how long I considered it, who I talked to, and what minute I did it. Yeah. They want the log on it. Anyway, that's the problem. And anyway.